Here we're going to test the different power consumption um, between using a pressurized buffer tank or just using a pump. So for this test, we've got a variable speed drive 1.5 kilowatt pump. It's set to 4.5 bar and it's set to allow the pressure to drop to about 1.2 bar before switching on again. And this should give us a good indication sort of uh, you really using the variable speed drive for the different flow rates in that to save power versus using the variable speed drive and using a pressurized buffer tank whether it gives you a measurable um, benefit in power consumption or not. So first what, we, what we've got here is we've got, we've got five, um, five gallon bottles which is 18.9 liters. This we're going to use to simulate small loads in the house. So like for example if a toilet flushes that's five liters. So you'd want to fill it up in batches of four, four times. If a washing machine washes you might find that you're using 10 liters at a time. So we want to simulate using these small loads and then also we've got a 250 litre tank here which would simulate say a shower for 20 minutes and then we want to see what is our total power consumption for filling all these bottles and doing the shower with and without the tank. So first let's let's see what we can do without the tank. These bottles in batches of four times and in between each each batch we want the pump to actually switch off. So I'm putting the pipe there, opening it up, the pump switches on, let, let it run a bit. So that's a fairly quick uh, five litre also load. And let's do a few more of those. Oh. Okay, so that was quite a quick load. So we were drawing five litre batches, but at a very high flow rate. So now let's, let's see a more common one would be running at a fairly slow flow rate, like something like a toilet um, running. So we're going to aim to do the same, but at a a fairly slow flow rate like you would have for filling a toilet. So the theory basically is when you're running like this the pump needs to be running constantly even though it can throttle down um, to provide a fairly small flow rate whereas with a pressurized buffer tank it can turn on run at a high flow and hopefully higher efficiency and not have to be running constantly. So, in effect, this would be like a toilet flushing. The, your actual fill rate on the toilet would be quite slow. So, you're running the pump constantly because it's constant water flow, but the actual amount of water is very insignificant. So, we're going to do a few of these like this, just to gauge sort of a typical actual real-world situation. You'll see the pump doesn't switch on immediately because it's actually got its own little pressurized buffer tank in there, but it's, I think it's only about a liter or so it is. Okay, now that our small loads are simulated, let's simulate running a few showers together for a, a high flow, long load, just to get that, that power consumption reading in here as well. Putting that in there, and we're gonna open it all the way. Okay. And we're now at this ridge here, a little under the middle of the ridge. It's now we'll repeat the same test with the pressurized buffer tank connected and see, see what we end up getting then. Okay, now put all the same water back in that tank and now we're trying it with the 60 litre buffer tank connected. 
Now this buffer tank we have optimized. Basically, we set it to um, the pressure 0.2 bar higher than the switch on pressure of the VSD pump, just to maximize the amount of water we can actually keep in here. And we set the VSD pump to its maximum um, range of pressure allowed to, to turn on and off, but it wasn't set to that for both tests. So the first one was for full, full force fills, and then we went to the, the slower fills. So immediately the difference is the, the pressure pump does, hasn't turned on yet. So you, you, it allows it to run quite a bit longer before having to switch on. So there we saved one cycle. Third one, and fourth. Now for these other ones running slow, it wouldn't actually consume any, any power while it's just drawing from the tank. So we'll allow it to run um, quicker until the pump actually turns on and then we'll slow it down to the same rate as we did for the other test. Okay, so the whole first test we did without the pump actually switching on. So notice our flow rate has dipped a bit and that's because the tank is starting to get emptier, but then when it reaches the threshold, the pump will switch on and um, then fill up the tank again. And what we hope to see is that the pump will switch on, fill up the tank and then switch off again for quite a few cycles. So there's halfway through the next one. Okay, and uh, let's limit it to our low flow. Slowly gaining pressure. You can feel the water's filling the tank at the moment as well. So big reason why you're saving power like this, instead of having to go beyond the point the pump can throttle, the extra power that's going into the pump is actually compressing the air in the tank, whereas previously it didn't have anywhere it could go. It was just lost basically as heat. Okay, there the pump is turned off again. Okay, so we've done three bottles here with only, and the, the pump only cycling during one of the cycles. And there the pump is turned back on again. Okay, so that's the end of its second cycle. So up until this point, we've used significantly less power. Um, we used about uh, 750 watt hours for the first one. At the moment, we've used the insignificant amount, but um, where the buffer tank won't help is for the simulation of running showers, because then it'll help for the first little bit, but at the end of the day, it'll, it'll end up being the same. And the water we scored in the tank at the beginning, we're starting with a full tank. We're gonna basically compensate for that at the end of the shower test, having um, where the pump will have to fill it up again. And so we end with a full tank. Okay, last bottle. Okay, so that's all of these bottles filled. And um, yeah, I think it only turned on twice, which is actually very impressive, um, considering we're basically almost at 100 liters uh, that we've cycled here. Next test is the shower.
after all of that, very impressive result. We managed to use, um, on the first test without the tank, 750 watt hours. And on the second test where we used the buffer tank, um, we only actually used 290 watt hours. So we used less than half the power um, by using the buffer tank um, to reduce the cycling of the pump. Now, the caveat to that is we did have this, this 1.5 kilowatt pump set to four and a half bar, which is on its upper end of what it can do out of a tank directly. So it was, wasn't set at a pressure where you'd really benefit from the variable speed drive much. Um, so we do want to do just a little test just with these bottles just to check how it does with the variable speed drive part being active and actually using it. But um, overall, if you, if you compare that to basically, a, in effect, we used it as a dump pump, a little bit cleverer than a dump pump, but still it's a massive saving by simply adding a pressure tank afterwards. One thing to keep in mind though is this pressure tank, we first set it to offer its maximum buffer capacity with the settings of the pump. If you don't do that, you won't get nearly as big of a benefit, but if you're spending the money on a tank, you might as well do that anyway. Okay, so let's see see what we get. Let's start here. So for this test, instead of the four and a half bar, we've now got it set to three and a half bar, and the, that one bar pressure difference, you'll notice it a bit in the house, um, but the big, big thing is, you can hear the the pump doesn't spool up to its maximum speed. So that means we're actually now within the range where the variable speed drive will help us even if the tap is open all the way. And at this flat out setting, we shouldn't see a huge difference, but where we should start to see a the difference in the performance is on these little ones. So if we open, we targeted the low flow, yes, now it's throttling down. Where on the previous um, pressure setting, it was actually still operating close to maximum. We're still actually using quite a bit of power, but um, we're definitely using less than we were previously. Now. With the buffer tank setup, we tested that we had 100 watt hours used to fill these five bottles. So now we just want to see what do we actually get at the lower flow of this one. Okay, so we've done our test with these bottles doing the same procedure again. Um, with the variable speed drive pump set to three and a half bar instead of four and a half. It definitely used less power because we saw peak power consumption drop from um, 1,400 watt um, while doing this sort of toilet flush simulation to about just over 1,000 watt. So it was definitely using less, but it was still using a significant amount of power. So what we found is we used 300 watt hours to fill this at the lower pressure versus the 100 watt hours we used when filling it at the higher pressure, but using the pressurized buffer tank um, to reduce the pump cycling. So, because in effect what happens is the pump is constantly on with this, it just is on, turns off, on, turns off. Whereas with the buffer tank, it was running a longer period of time, but it only actually cycled on three times and then each time it was pumping at a much higher volume, which it's more efficient at, um, while filling the bottle plus filling the tank at the same time. So basically the conclusion we've seen here today is for the price of a buffer, a, a buffer tank, um, it's almost a no-brainer with, with any pump as, depending on your use case, we basically saw half to um, a third of the power consumption. Where it will not be the case is if it's a pump being used for irrigation where it's just running massive amounts of water, then a tank's not really going to make a difference to your power consumption. But sort of domestic use, which is small amounts and on and off, or short showers even, we actually saw that it made a, quite a significant difference.